Now let's talk about corruption. The U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Stephanie Sullivan, is making a strong case for Ghana to take her corruption fight to levels where people caught indulging in the practice face heavy sanctions. According to Her Excellency uh, Sullivan, the high perception of corruption among state institutions has the potential to affect the business confidence of investors. She's been speaking at a public forum on the cost of corruption in Ghana, deliberations for remedy, where she urged Ghanaian authorities to crack the whip and punish corrupt persons to restore confidence. It is not a victimless crime, but in fact is stealing directly from the pockets of citizens. And I notice we have a citizen here today, at least one. <laughs> <laughs> Globally, uh, corruption costs 5% of GDP. It increases the cost of doing business and reduces investment in countries perceived to be relatively more corrupt. Under the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, American companies are forbidden from engaging in bribery and corruption under penalty of our laws, which are rigorously enforced. Therefore, American companies look to bring foreign investment that creates jobs and contributes to economic growth to countries where they can operate ethically. Corruption also enables illicit activities. West Africa loses 1.95 billion US dollars each year in the illicit trade in fisheries and other marine resources alone. On top of that, illegal mining, logging, and wildlife trafficking cost nations and citizens even more. We all know there's no magic bullet to fight corruption. Every citizen can participate in reducing the corruption which can hinder national development and pose a serious threat to public safety. Progress needs to be made on several fronts simultaneously. Ending impunity, reforming public administration and financial management, promoting transparency and access to information, and empowering citizens to demand accountability from the officials who represent and serve and work for them. Ultimately, it's about ensuring that government at all levels is responsive and responsible to its citizens. Well, the U.S. ambassador's position is backed by her colleague, Dutch ambassador Ron Stricker, who has been advocating the use of investigative journalism to, as a key tool to unearth corruption. Um, law enforcement, I think my American colleague sent is, I think, um, um, when there is a perception of impunity, that really does not help. And, and we have made many comments, I think, in recent weeks and months uh, on this, not that the institutions are not there, we all know that we have many institutions, Office of the Special Prosecutor, the whole judiciary system, the Auditor General, etc. But in the end, of course, also where something have, has gone wrong, um, a penalty should be inflicted and people should be able to see that. Um, investigative journalism, that really helps. Um, and I see this in my own country. Um, it's not always only corruption. It could also be mismanagement or bad management of a certain political issue or whatsoever. But um, that helps. Um, uh, journalists who investigate, that may take time. Um, uh, it, it, of course, it costs a lot of effort. But in the end, it is important that uh, some things come to the light. Of course, corruption does not. Um, accept or doesn't like light on it, doesn't like transparency. So if journalists come to the point, do investigations and bring uh, uh, things to the forefront, um, um, then I think that would really help. But, of course, those same journalists, and I'm saying this with, not without a reason, should also, of course, have the particular protection of the law. Um, because um, we have seen instances where they uh, have had be, has, have been confronted with violence and so forth. A lot of you have been sending in your messages as well. Thanks for sharing and thanks for staying tuned with us. That's about corruption.